What's going on guys? Car Review Guys here. My name is AJ and we are with the 2024 Honda Ridgeline. This is the Trail Sport. This is basically one down from the top trim level. Hopefully the wind is not too bad for you guys. It is really gusting today, but guess what? Today's the day that I have access to do this. I do have it all week, but I work a full-time job as well. Almost to 20,000 subscribers. Thank each and every one of you. If you're new to the channel, this is going to be the full review. Next video is gonna be five things to love, five things to improve. We are going to be starting with a cinematic and then we're gonna do the exterior along with stats, figures, stuff like that. Jump to the interior and then we're gonna take it on a drive. So let's roll. enjoyed that cinematic let's go ahead and go over some of these stats and figures this ridge line has a v6 pushing 280 horsepower transmission comes in a nine-speed automatic drivetrain is all-wheel drive and the curb weights coming in at around 4495 pounds on this trim level which is going to be pushing this ridge line from 0 to 60 in about 6.4 to 6.6 seconds now Gas is obviously important. Your MPG, you're looking at 18 city, 23 highway, and a combined average of 20 MPGs. Your fuel tank size is 19.5 gallons. Now, overall length, you are going to be looking at about 17 and a half feet, and your width is six and a half feet, and then the height is about five foot nine to five foot 10 in that region. Now, as you can see, we are coming to the rear. And before we touch on some of the cool features back here, let's talk price very quickly. The base sport starts at $39,750. And the tester today is $46,830. And that is, of course, including the destination charge. Now, while we are back here, let's go over some of the cool features. Now, obviously you can see dual exhaust. There is a backup camera in the tailgate, which I will show you whenever I put it up. But this is one of the coolest features of this truck, in my opinion. Back here, there is a little handle in between. You just pop that, it pops up, it's sealed off. There's even a drain plug down here. You have your spare tire. And that is a lot of storage space if you need it for a vacation or wherever you may be going and it is lockable as you can see there pretty neat touch not too many other vehicles have this feature as stated you can see the backup camera is located right there now you can see the back you can see it says ridgeline and you have trail sport and i do love that it is dual exhaust coming around to the driver's side that is where your fuel door is located and then the wheels are like a gun metal gray they're a 245 60 18. You do have a keyless entry on both of the front doors. It is not on the rear door. And then continuing on up front, you're gonna notice LED runner, which does look nice. A pretty nice looking front end as well, and LED headlamp, and then you have some fog lamps down below. Taking a look at the rear, there is a handle here. So if you need it just to be storage space, you can simply just pull up and now you've got a ton of storage space and put it down touching on the rear door you have a cup holder window switch obviously your handle this is all soft touch where your elbow would be and then everything else is a hard plastic if you are new to this channel i am five foot nine so let's test getting in the rear is it easy or 
not, there is a handle located right here if you need it. Uh, I don't really need it too much, to be honest with you. You got to duck just a little bit. Ground clearance is close to the eight inch mark right in there somewhere. And now that we are back here, hopefully you can see, I know the lighting is a little bit dim. You got probably two inches up there of headspace and that's where my seat sits to drive. We've got probably another two and a half, three inches there. So I am very comfortable back here. Now, in the middle, you can pull this down. You've got a couple more cup holders there, and of course, an armrest. Last thing to touch on while we're back here, you do have your own vents, and it is temperature controlled. So it is a tri-zone, but it is controlled from up there, and I will show you that in just a second. Taking a look at the driver's door, you can see we have memory seating, two different settings, and then you have your auto for the fronts. And then the materials are soft touch where your elbow would go, and then here is actually a little bit softer touch as well. And then up here, it's kind of like a rubberized material. Um, it's kind of hard to describe, but still it is a higher end quality materials than in the rear, except for this little piece here is pretty much the same. You can see you have some accent stitching. It looks nice. Power front seats for both of them. And of course you've got trail sport right there in the headrest and the leather is nice and soft. It does feel uh, pretty nice. Time to test the front seat here. Let's see what this is like. It is easier to get into the front than the rear. And the only other thing I will mention back there because the seat sits a little bit higher because it's kind of like stadium seating back there, which is nice once you're in, obviously just a little bit harder to kind of get into. And if you guys have been following along, I have been fighting, I don't know, a bulging disc or something. Got an MRI, long story short. Uh, my neck is like a little bit better than it was, but it's still, still a long, long road, I'm thinking. So nonetheless, we have more doctor's appointments to follow up on that. But you can see I'm kind of slow getting in, kind of harder to, to bend my head. So I think most other people are not gonna have a problem. Let's go ahead and touch on some of the interior features and we're not going to make fun of my white pasty legs. Nonetheless, down here, you've got your eco button. You have a lane departure down here uh, and then your cargo lights, uh, traction control, and then your crash avoidance system. And then you have your mirrors to fully adjust, obviously left and right. And then taking a look at the steering wheel, you're going to notice we have a heated steering wheel there and then pretty standard for the most part nowadays, but it does have lane centering and it does work without the cruise control being set. That's a super nice feature. The only other companies I have seen so far do that are Kia, Hyundai, Genesis, and now Honda. So maybe more are adapting to that, but it is nice not having to set your cruise and it's still staying center of the lane. Of course, adaptive cruise control. And then over here, all of your volume, seek, so on and so forth, voice control. And then of course the home and scroll bar, are to control half of the digital screen because basically your speed over here is a analog and then from right here and over is all digital. There's not a heads up display on this model and then up above we have home link which is nice to have. Up a little bit further we do have sunroof controls and we have a sunglasses holder and then that is your sunroof which can open obviously further than that as you can see but nothing too crazy there and then pretty much if you're familiar with any of the newer hondas this is a very uh familiar system it's easy to use uh you can see the responsiveness as i click it um and then moving on down you're going to notice see where it says rear settings here that is so you can set the temperature in the rear as i said it is a tri zone and i found that very interesting obviously being a fairly small cabin but is a nice feature and of course heated seats down here we have a wireless phone charger two cup holders and then obviously your gear shifting and then this is your different drive modes right here and you're going to notice there's normal that's snow mud sand and back to normal taking a look in the center console it is a good size you definitely can fit several different tissue boxes in there i think we've covered just about everything on the interior that you would really want to know so now i think it's time we get this trail sport out on the road and see how it performs 
So I have put about 80, 90 miles on this vehicle so far. And the, one of the first things that I will say that I noticed is, and again, you can take this for whether you like this or not. For me, I thought it was definitely a neat feature that you don't get in many other, not a neat feature, but a, a neat feeling that you get out of this that a lot of others you don't. When I drive this, it really feels kind of almost like a small to medium size SUV. It does not feel large at all. Now, of course, it's really not that big. Again, dimensions around 17 and a half feet. So with that being said, there's pros to that and then there's cons to that. Mainly the pros in my mind is, and we'll talk about it a little bit more probably, is the suspension. Uh, it definitely feels way more agile than most like trucks that you're going to be in. Um, and it, again, easy to navigate. So maybe if you live in the city, Maybe you have a small garage, you need to fit it in there. Like you can still get a lot done with this vehicle for sure. Um, and it's usable. Touching on noise very quickly, it actually has pretty good soundproofing. Um, better than I really did expect. Um, honestly, this thing does really good. <laughs> I mean, the, the one thing you can hear is the motor. Uh, you can hear that whenever you're accelerating. You may even be able to hear it right now. Uh, as far as wind noise goes, don't hear much. Here comes a few cars, just take a listen. So like I said, wind noise is really good. You really don't hear that. You can hear the tires just a little bit, but again, pretty good. Definitely better than majority of trucks out there, I would say. A few key points, obviously, to mention being a Honda, known for reliability, right? Um, <laughs> they run forever, so that's one good thing that you're probably going to be looking at for a Honda. The second thing uh, is build quality. Honda is always known for a good build quality, so something to keep in mind whenever you're shopping around. Now, we have to touch on noise one more time because we're coming up to our cattle guard. We do it with every vehicle, and what that's going to do is test suspension a little bit and noise. So let's see how much I move and how loud is it. Mind you, no vehicle is, like, perfect, obviously. So that was pretty good. That, that was actually better than I anticipated. Uh, Suspension-wise, you can see that I stayed pretty level for the most part. And then as far as noise, again, you can hear the tires a little bit. So maybe on the tire side, maybe about average, I would say. Not crazy impressive, but as far as suspension goes, that was good. As mentioned, the lane centering does work without setting your cruise control. Uh, to me, that stands out. Kia, Hyundai, Genesis are the only brand that I knew that did that actually up until now. Um, here we are with a Honda and it stays dead center of the lane. Now, Disclaimer, always keep your hands on the wheel. You should always have them there. Hopefully you know that. It's not made to depend on it, but if you need to get a drink of water, whatever the case is, it's good to not be driving with your knee, obviously. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, that is a really nice feature. Adaptive cruise control seems to work uh, pretty good. The only thing that I will say about the adaptive, like it definitely does good distances, does good acceleration. When you need to, it's not too much. Uh, the only thing that I will note that kind of stood out to me is you can almost kind of feel it's a little touchy on the brakes in the sense of like how it kind of uh, pulses. Not a lot, maybe to you it wouldn't be noticeable. Again, I have a new vehicle every single week and I'm comparing them, you know, I don't want to say side by side, but it's just something small that I did notice, uh, but not a big deal. Now we need to touch on blind spots. Over to my left, very easy to see, even with my neck having a hard time turning to the left. Over to the right, not much of a blind spot either, but of course there is blind spot monitoring if you have any issues. All right, let's test the suspension from a turning standpoint, just in normal. Let's take this at 25, there it is. So again, it, fe it doesn't feel like a truck because it really handles almost like a mid-size SUV. Um, so, definitely a vehicle that you may cross shop if you're wanting a truck but maybe you can't afford a truck and a car and you kind of want to still feel like you're driving something medium sized uh, this would be a pretty good option now let's talk about just a, a feature that matters to me and it may matter to you here in Arizona it gets really hot 
and the this trim level does not have ventilated slash cooled seats now keep in mind that you can get them you just have to go up to the top trim level and then you can have the heated and ventilated seats in the front if there is anything I am missing or anything else you would like to know on this vehicle, just comment down below. I try to respond to every single person. Again, we're almost to 20,000 subscribers. Thank each and every one of you. And the next video is going to be five things to love and five things to improve. So be sure to stick around for that. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.